podcast. Hi, everybody. It's Brent Bailey, and it is another glorious day to be alive. It is Friday, July the 10th, as we have squarely moved into the second half of 2020. And <clears throat> excuse me, it's a, it's a good thing to be on the second half of 2020. We can now say that we're, we're on our way out of this year. So hopefully you're having a great day wherever you are. I know that we are here. I'm joined today by Jody and uh, Luke, and uh, we're so uh, glad to be with you. We've got a great show planned for you today. I've got uh, one of the best uh, motivational speakers I've ever heard in my life. He is a strategic coach and an author. I've got Simon T. Bailey. He's going to be on the program, and he'll be out here in just a few minutes. I uh, can't wait to bring him out. He's got so much good stuff to say. I'm going to tell you today, he's like drinking from a fire hose. It's just so much information uh, coming at you so fast. Uh, it's so good. So anyway, uh, let's bring uh, Jody and Luke in. How are you guys doing over there? There's there's Jody, at least. Uh, Luke is uh, busy. I'm, I'm over here. <laughs> he's I'm here. there. I promise. <laughs> he's <laughs> so, here. So, uh, what's going on today, guys? You guys doing well? Doing good. How about you, Luke? Feeling good. Feel yeah. alive. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, well, there's a lot of things to talk about today before we get to our guest. Uh, I saw a very interesting article about four things you should never put into a microwave. Four things you should never put into the microwave besides... So, it's the number one food? <coughs> Is that it? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> because it does make it kind of taste soggy, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I've never really had too much. Except like soup. Right. Soup, definitely. But food, solid food, doesn't do well. Liquids are good. Yeah, liquids, yeah. coffee, stuff yeah. like that. I haven't had a microwave forever. We just got one. I know that when uh, they first came out, they were showing people cooking steaks in them and all kinds of stuff yeah, like that. Oh, no. God. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. And I don't think they're the same anymore either. The, the original microwaves were called radar ranges, and they did have a lot more power, and they did things a little differently. The new ones, not so much. But uh, our question of the day is, tell us your, your favorite microwave fail. Okay, so in the comments below, give us your favorite or your biggest... Uh, microwave fail. Aluminum foil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, turn Jody up a little bit. I can yeah. barely hear her. Um, so, w- go ahead. Tell us your... Had, we we had an experience, uh, not with us, but with one of our kids. The same kid, twice. The same kid, twice. Oh yeah. That he likes ramen noodles. Preston likes ramen, ramen noodles and eats them like it's his job. And he has seen us cook it before <laughs> numerous <laughs> times. And for some reason, he put it in the noodles in the bowl with no water. Yeah. So then our house smelled like <laughs> burnt styrofoam for exactly. a few days. Exactly. So. Yeah, it was awful. Speaking of styrofoam, that's the first thing you're not supposed to put inside of a microwave is uh, styrofoam. It wow. melts. And if you ever had huh. those, you know, the little trays that you, you to go boxes, mm-hmm. they tell you yeah. you should take those out, take it out of that, and put it inside or put it on a you know, a microwavable plate. Wow. So uh, the reason is, is it's flammable, which is number one, and next is it's toxic. So yeah. when it melts, it releases the toxins into your food. Oh, my. Every time I make a cup of noodles. I was going to say. Now, now, there is, some, there is a microwave-safe styrofoam, but yes. they're talking about the to-go to go cups, containers. Yeah. Uh, and so anytime yeah. you've done that, maybe that's what's wrong with you. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you've been eating styrofoam uh, microscopic particles. The second thing was sponges. Really? Now, a lot of people say, they... a lot of people tell you that, you know, you put a sponge in the microwave and the microwaving kills most of the bacteria that's in it. And that's true. That is a, a step that they do, you know, tell you to do. Put this in there. That way you don't have to worry about stuff growing in your sponge but the thing is is that only works once after that it doesn't do it again so So you gotta throw it away after that throw it away after you microwave it once don't put it back in there all right yeah i've never heard of people doing that before that's interesting the third thing was plastic containers as in like butter tubs right or those little ziploc one shot freezer bags uh no, like like the the little plastic ones, yeah. but the thin ones that are just meant to keep something in the right. refrigerator, because those are also poisonous. When it releases and melts, 
in the microwave. You ever, you ever gone there and done that? And you open the microwave and it's all squished down and yeah. kind of flat. Well, that's um, that's not good. No. It's it's, Don't eat it's the releasing the that. toxins into your food. The last one, and I thought everybody knew this one. Metal of any kind. Right. I thought everybody knew that. I thought everybody knew that. You don't put metal of any kind. Spoons, aluminum foil, or anything. Now, it does do a very nice show. <laughs> it's fireworks. In fireworks. fact, our, our microwave just had a piece break off inside and exposing the metal yeah. caging underneath. So every time we used it for a little bit, it would glow over in the corner. So, uh, But yeah, you don't want to put anything like that because it, it will actually short out the, the lifespan. And we will say that we did. We got rid of that microwave. We did. We yeah, absolutely We have did. a new one now. All right. So today there's also all kinds of national days today. Uh, the first uh, of is not anything I'm excited about. It is National Kitten Day. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not a cat person. Oh. So those are cute right there. But they are cute. I am not a cat person, and Jody is allergic to them. Uh, our kids love them, but this doesn't really mean anything to me. <laughs> Does anybody remember the Tom and Jerry cartoon when Tom went to heaven? Well, and he had to get Jerry to forgive him for everything or else he was going to go to hell. And, and, and the bulldog was hell, was the devil. <laughs> okay, so there's a scene in there where uh, these three little kittens come like, there's a bag that's sopping wet like a burlap bag and it's like rolling towards the gates and there's three kittens in there. Yeah. That's how I feel yeah. about kittens. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So the next one is National Clarahue Day. And I had to go oh, and be yeah, like, what in the world is Clarahue? And and you'll know what it is because it we've all heard them. It's a little rhyming biographical poem. And Mr. Clarahue is the guy who um, invented that. Edmund Clarahue Bentley invented the first ever <laughs> Clarahue in, uh, uh, somewhere in the 1800s. And it's a biographical poem, four lines. It would be something like, you know, uh, Jody's uh, having a day. And then you go, you know, on from there, you biographical. Yeah. I'm never good at I'm, I'm not I'm, good at I'm making not it good up. At so. it. I'm like, nope. <laughs> Here's the, f- the one, the first one he made was Sir Humphrey Davy abandoned gravy. <laughs> he lived in the odium of having discovered sodium. So, right. There you go. Right. Whoopee. <laughs> it's National Clear Hue Day. The next one, this actually means a lot to people like my dad. This is Collector Car Appreciation Day. And so what you're supposed to do is give a shout out today to anybody that you know that restores cars. So I guess we're going to give a shout out to Mark Bowman today. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. the guy that does a lot of stuff for my dad. Yeah. Restored a bunch of his uh, things. And thank so, you for what you do. Uh, yeah, thank you for all what you do. We love uh, seeing your works of art driving down the road. And lastly, Jody, this one may mean a lot to you. Oh, good grief. <laughs> do you like pina coladas? <laughs> And getting caught in the rain. Today is National Pina Colada Today. Yes, it is. Pina Colada Day. And it's, Pina uh, Colada, laying out by the pool. Yeah, drinking one of those up. Picture with palm trees there. Because, you know, that's what put it that, Put that back up there. Yeah. Now, see, that one is is leaded. And you know how you can tell? How? The fruit that they put on the side. Wow. If it's unleaded, they put a different fruit on there. Oh, it's, okay. It's like a... Interesting. Yeah. So. so like an orange, they'd put right. an orange or something like that. Our guest today is a real treat to have on the show. Uh, Success Magazine calls him one of the top 25 people that will help you reach your business and your life goals. He travels all over the world. He's one of the best speakers I've ever heard. We got to meet him at one of the Increase events, but we've seen him in action out on the road at other places. I am really pleased to have uh, with us the author, speaker, and life coach extraordinaire the author of uh, shift your brilliance release your brilliance and uh, his latest book is called uh, finding your spark please welcome to the program our good friend Simon T Bailey Simon how are you great to have you with me good to be with you cousin Bailey yes that's right (laughs) my long lost cousin Uh, man how have you been how's everything going uh, since COVID hit you know what? Getting through it and uh, believing that the best is yet to come. Yeah. Yeah. Now, has it affected you, uh, your travel schedule? I'm sure it has. Yes. I literally, I've been grounded for 100 days, so it's a bit of an adjustment. Wow. That's probably the longest you've had a chance to spend at home for a while. Longest in 20 years. Wow. Unbelievable. So, uh, 
Simon has a YouTube channel that we, we follow and uh, subscribe to. I'd suggest that you do the same thing. But uh, I noticed that you've been doing some uh, videos lately, uh, and your last few that you've done have just been about peace. And during these, man, uncertain times with COVID and now all of the, the uh, racial unrest uh, uh, that's happening in the country, that message is so uh, just powerful and relevant to everybody. Well, I really believe it's time for us to have a conversation and build a bridge from where we are to where we can go together, locking arm in arm, understanding that it's not about you're right and I'm wrong, but it's understanding how do I recognize that you have value and how do I respect as I get to hear, heal, and help. And so when we start these conversations, and, and we've, we've been tr doing our best to try and have those same kind of conversations, which is really what this podcast was birthed from, um, what, what are some of the questions that we should be asking ourselves during those times? I think the, the first question we have to start with is, what is it that I don't know? What have I been told that is not necessarily true about other races, other people, uh, other ethnicities? What information has been fed to me, and based on what? and begin to do our own research, asking the deeper question, is it true or did somebody make it up? And, and when we really begin to peel back the onion and get to the core of the issue, what we understand is no matter how we bleed, we all bleed red, uh, even though the pigmentation of our skin might be different. Uh, so we've got to ask that deeper question, what have we been taught and, and who has passed on this belief system to me about others? And once we identify that, Simon, how, how do I go about changing that and breaking that? I think we have to look within ourselves and start with ourselves and say, what is it in my heart that is prohibiting me from really connecting with you? And how do I come to a place of forgiveness within myself and say, I have been wrong within myself. Now, I need to learn. And I start by asking you a question. Tell me about you. Tell me about your life. Tell me about your journey. You may have never walked a mile in my shoes, but the empathy to want to know about my side of the tracks helps me let down my guard and become open to really understanding that you care and you want to know. Our guest today is Simon T. Bailey, uh, author and speaker and, and success coach. Uh, Simon, as, as people have uh, begun to really, I, I, in my, now I'm only, you know, 49 years old, getting ready to turn 50 next year. Uh, I haven't seen uh, and lived through a lot of uh, the 60s and, and, and things. So in my lifetime, this has been the most uh, prevalent of times of conversating and people actually getting to talk about these things, um, and, and really, rightly so. Um, what, what, in your experience, uh, have you seen periods of this before where, where people have really started to talk like that or have, have they just, has it been something that's kind of been glazed over? I think it's been totally glazed over and people go in their homes, they lock their doors, they close their shutters and they never open themselves up to the neighbors around them who may not look like them. And, and so it's always been there but everybody's turned a blind eye and I think the reason why this has happened is you have a perfect storm of COVID-19 sheltering in place, you have racial interest, and then you have economic uncertainty. And so all of a sudden you have this cocktail of opportunity where everybody's waking up like, whoa, what's really going on? And I think what's really gonna solve this is when people start in their neighborhoods and invite people who don't look like them to say, if, you, if I can't invite you into my home, obviously because of COVID-19, can we at least meet someplace establishing physical distancing, but to start just communication and a conversation around how do we get better, even do it virtually to say, how do I begin to reach out to individuals who uh, are from different walks of life for what we may learn together at the table of brotherhood? This is that's so good. Uh, now, now, Simon, you, you're, you're also a, a, a breakthrough strategist for businesses and people in their own personal lives. In your book, uh, um, Finding Your Spark, uh, you, you talk about achieving platinum level service for your life, for your, your business and things like that. And I, 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 obviously, we want to drive people to, to buy the book. But can you, can you give us just a little bit of insight of how that can apply to us 
during this time right now? Yeah, so when I wrote the book Be the Spark, it, it really was starting with what makes me come alive? Because when I find my spark, I find my joy. When I find my joy, I find my voice. When I find my voice, I find the opportunity and my freedom. So everyone listening to us right now is, what is that thing that you would do if no one paid you to do it? What is the problem that you have been created to solve here on Earth? And when you do that, that moves you towards finding your, your spark. And so the, the, the premise that, that I'm catching from it is, is that once you get that spark, that's what uh, it, it turns into the roaring fire of, you know, of, of yes. your life. Yes. All of your activities, your priorities, your habits come out of that spark, that thing that you've been called to do, your universal assignment that no one else can do uh, beyond you. Now, during this time, and you, you mentioned it earlier, it was a, uh, it was a uh, perfect cocktail of, of things, but it seems to me that during this time of, of being locked up in the house and, and grounded, as you called it earlier also, uh, that, that this is really causing people to, to really evaluate some things and to go looking for that spark, isn't it? Absolutely. It's evaluating uh, and challenging people to look at what's my purpose, what's my plan, and what's the process? Because when I become more purposeful, I create the plan and I go through the process to wake up every single day to make the purpose become a reality. Now, now Simon, uh, we, we always like to leave room for our guests to really just kind of speak about things that are on their heart. And, and we talk about things that, that, um, that we, we are interested in, but then you know what are what are some things that you're doing right now during this time to you know to kind of keep yourself positive and and really what have you been kind of I don't know uh, surrounding yourself with during these times? Oh my goodness! So so first of all, I've been writing uh, three books, so that has kept me like literally like just engrossed. I'm creating a whole online institute because I normally was on a plane traveling somewhere in the world to speak so now I'm speaking virtually and uh, we'll be launching the Simon T. Bailey Online Institute which will be a repository of all of my best thinking and learning and then we are partnering with an organization in the Middle East to launch one of my courses in Arabic so really really excited about that and, and providing a number of services to organizations who say our workforce is working remote, how do we make sure that they're in a good mental space to take care of our customers? How do we make sure that they know that we as a business care about them? And then how do we make sure that we're making a bigger difference in the world? Wow, and you're, you're gonna be uh, over in the Middle East in Arabic. That is, man, that talk about crossing uh, barriers and boundaries, that is amazing. Um, as you go to start launching everything, I know that you've kind of always been on the cutting edge of everything. I mean, uh, Simon used to work for Disney as, as a, an executive there. Uh, I, I don't want to just limit you to that, but can you tell that story real quick? Uh, I, I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting at Disney one day, and I got a call from a journalist. And whenever you work at Disney, you never talk to the media unless authorized. So uh, the journalist said to me, where do you see yourself 10 to 15 years from now? And I said, I see myself as the president and CEO of the Walt Disney World Resort and eventually the chairman and CEO of the Walt Disney Company. And he puts this in print. <laughs> so the article comes out, page 12, Florida Business Trend Magazine, February 2002. And my boss calls me in the office and he says like, what were you thinking when you did this interview? And I said, Larry, I work at this company whose motto is, if your heart is in your dreams, no request is too extreme. For when you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. But obviously, it does here. So funny today, not funny then. So uh, HR shows up and asks me to sign a piece of paper that went into my personnel file. And let's just say Disney didn't fire me that day. But about a year later, I heard the footsteps coming. And they were not singing, it's a small world after all. <laughs> so here we are, almost 18 years later, 
and it was the best mistake I have ever made in my <laughs> life because I've had a chance now to work with 1,800 organizations in 49 countries. I've written 10 books, and I'm living the dream, having an amazing time. That's so awesome. Now, as you as you have, have started uh, doing things, like I said, you're, you've always been kind of on the cutting edge uh, as long as I've known you, and you seem like you've always, you know, we're talking about things that were very relevant at the time. Uh, how do you bridge a gap? Uh, because the Middle East is kind of, you know, there are some places that are, you know, as, as advanced as the third, you know, as the rest of us, and there are some places that are very third world. How do you take that message and, and bring that down to somebody who's just maybe never even heard something like that? Yeah, I was just in uh, Kampala, Uganda, uh, pre-COVID-19, and had never been to Uganda, had been on the African continent. But what I discovered is I had to come alongside them to understand the culture, uh, what connects, what's important, and then build a bridge from what they understand and, help, and, and allow the content to connect. So telling stories, using phraseology, and even slowing down my speech to make sure it lands. So that's how you really connect and, and make sure that it, it speaks to a person. That's so awesome. And, and, and Simon, I couldn't be happier for you for that. And, and to get your message out to the rest of the world is something that the world's really going to benefit from. And we're really excited and happy for you for that. Before we let you go, um, I know that uh, the quarantines have lifted and, and people are starting to get out. And then there's a, there's a fear mindset that's coming back because the cases are elevating and uh, and things like that. As we uh, start to adopt into this post-COVID world, what is the biggest one little piece of advice you could give us that, that yeah. would really help people move on? Yeah, don't forget that we are social creatures by nature, and I think we have to use the phraseology that we are practicing physical distancing instead of social distancing because so people need connection. The second thing is fortitude is the new attitude and fortitude is this ability to have courage in the midst of adversity. I don't have enough time to unpack that, but fortitude, just think about fortitude is in the movie 300. Fortitude is in the movie Hunger Games when you see Jennifer Lawrence. Fortitude is in the movie uh, Wonder Woman fortitude is the new attitude Simon man I could sit and listen to you talk all day long and I wish we had more time with you we're going to put your information up on the screen right now uh, as as we uh, start to head into this post COVID world if you'd like and I highly encourage it but if you'd like to get uh, some of Simon's information uh, it's coming up on the screen right now it's um on Instagram, it's Simon T. Bailey. I can barely see it down there. Uh, Facebook is Simon T. Bailey. And on LinkedIn, also, he's Simon T. Bailey. You can get all of his books at simontbailey.com. Uh, you can sign up for his coaching service. You can also get his newsletter there. Um, he's also available on Amazon. Uh, you can pick up all of his books there. And every one of the books that I've read has really really spoken and awoken something within me simon thank you so much for taking the time to be thank with you. us today um thank and you. as we leave uh, leave you off with this um i'm uh, just going to ask you one one last question uh can you just say one quick word about the brilliance on the inside of everybody so uh everyone has brilliance potential and genius in them you know there's a scene from the movie lion king where rafiki holds up simba and as Simba begins to grow, Simba says, uh, remember who you are. You are more than what you have become. <laughs> that is your brilliance, is recognizing you are more than what you have become. So brilliance is your insight, your potential, your genius. Simon T. Bailey, everybody, thank you so much for being with us today. Have a great rest of your day. We uh, just appreciate and love you so much and uh, looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you, Cousin Bailey. Yeah, you too, Cousin. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> That's, right. That is author, speaker, coach, and success strategist, Simon T. Bailey. Uh, as you can tell, there's so much there. Every time he speaks, it's it's a soundbite, and it's just awesome. And, uh, man, I'm so grateful that he took the time to be with us today. Coming up Monday on the program, I'm going to have a, a special young man with me who has uh, started a, uh, a, a new program 
uh, inside of jails and prisons to help uh, educate and uh, really offer hope and inspiration to the inmates. Uh, he started this in Clark County, Ohio, and he's now spreading it uh, on a national level to jails and prisons all across the United States. The great thing about this guy is he's related to me. His dad and my dad are brothers, and uh, I'm so excited to be having my cousin, Reverend Tony Bailey. And it's become a, um, a Bailey show here. We had Simon today and Tony on mon uh, Monday. Have a great rest of your day today. Uh, we love you guys so much. We encourage you to uh, grab a hold of Simon's information. Uh, there, it'll be going coming up on the screen again. Uh, and as you do, pick up the books, pick up the information, book him at your church, book him at your event. It's a great. Uh, he's a great uh, man and a great speaker. It'll speak a lot into your life. Until Monday, we love you guys so much. For Jody and Luke, I'm Brent Bailey. Get outside and break the cabin fever. Have a great day, everybody.